Hi everyone, it's Mubashir here and in this video we're going to look at Ascentis Entry 3 and Level 1 Writing Exams and how to pass those exams. Let's start with Task 1 which is to fill out a form. We will look at tasks from Ascentis Sample Exam Papers and thank you to Ascentis for providing these. So for the form in task one, you have to follow the instructions carefully. I know many learners who instead of focusing on what is in front of them, they're thinking about either task two or three or just not paying attention. Maybe they're even thinking about the biryani they will have for lunch or the fish and chips or I don't know, maybe they're thinking about making a sandwich or whatever, okay? Just Pay attention to what is in front of you and follow the instructions carefully. A common instruction that tends to come up a lot in the task one form is where you have to delete as applicable. This means to delete or remove that which does not apply to you. So in my case, I am Mr. Or I was the last time I checked. So here I need to remove or delete the others like so. You do that by putting a line across those words or those options okay so I know it's confusing remember do not delete that one which applies to you but delete the others remove the others in the form don't forget to use the capital letters when you fill it out with your names and your details all proper nouns your first name your last name or surname your address, name of the street, area, town, city, and also the postcode, use capital letters. And again, also remember to tick, circle, or underline as instructed. Okay, read the instructions carefully and follow them. Use a tick if you have to, a circle, or underline. Be clear as to which one you have to use. So you need to fill the form out properly, okay? Uh, make sure all the information is there. Don't leave any gaps, names with capital letter, okay, your address. And remember, you don't need to put your real address. I and mean, this is not my real address if you didn't guess that already. 25 Nonsense Road, Boring Park, London and the postcode. But look, all the capital letters are there. Your email, yes, mindyourbusiness at gmail.com. Again, it's not my real address. Uh, yeah, just you can put any address. Superstarali at gmail.com. Mariam, the queen of England at yahoo.co.uk. As long as it follows the email form. Also, don't forget to put the date if it asks you. And again, be careful. Follow these instructions. It says tick one box. So do that correctly. The other thing you must do in task one is write sentences in response to some questions or in order to give feedback. At entry three level, you'll probably have to do this once or twice, but at level one, you will have to do it at least, I think, four times. Uh, you'll be given uh, some space like here to write sentences. A lot of learners I know are scared to write too much. They think that if they write a lot, they'll make mistakes. So they write very little. That is wrong. You are allowed to make some mistakes. I say don't worry about making mistakes. Focus on getting it right. So in response to this question, describe what happened. And there was an accident. What happened? I wrote my chair broke and I fell in class. I twisted my ankle. It hurt. You see? Short sentences. It hurt. Two words. My teacher called 999. The other students helped me. The staff at the college also helped me and gave me water. The ambulance came and took me to hospital. It was a difficult day, but I am thankful for the help I got. You see, write short sentences. Keep things simple, okay? And don't worry about mistakes. Just focus on getting it right. Think about it like this. Imagine you are managing a football team and you want them to score some goals. You will instruct them to try as many times as they can to score goals. In other words, you will instruct them to kick the ball towards the net as many times as they can or to make attempts at goal 
as many times as possible. So say for example they made uh, they make 10 attempts. They might score once or twice and that is good enough for the win. So it's the same situation here. Try to write correct sentences as many as you can, okay? They may not all be completely correct, but the more you try, the more chances you have of at least getting some of them that are absolutely correct without any mistakes. Now let's talk about task two and three and making plans. For both task two and task three writing, you need to make plans. Now this is totally different to the actual writing task that will come later. The plan is there to help you with ideas and help you to prepare for your writing, which you will do later. For task two, you might have to write a review. For this particular task, you have to write a review of a film you have seen for your local newspaper. You must plan the points you are going to include and how you're going to introduce, develop and finish your writing. Write at least 150 words. Plan your review here. Yes, so before you do the actual writing, you have to do the planning. It's very important that you read and understand what you have to do. So here you have to write a review. What is a review? A review of a film or a book is when someone shares their thoughts or opinions about it. So you have to share your thoughts and opinions about a film you have seen and you must give a summary and say whether you liked it or not. You can give a brief summary of the film and talk about the acting and also whether you would recommend the film to others or not. When it comes to the plan, it is very important to use your ideas. What film will you write about? What is the name of the film? What is the film about? What is the story? What about the acting? Did you like the film? What did you like about the film? What did you not like about the film? What other lessons can we learn from watching the film? Would you recommend the film to others? So you really, you, you have to use your ideas and you have to list them. A good idea would be to use bullet points or a spidergram to list your ideas very clearly and easily, okay? Don't write sentences in the plan. Only write words and phrases, okay? Don't write sentences here. You will write sentences later on in the actual writing part. Here, for example, film name, father. Okay, that is the name of the film. That is the first bullet point. And then continue with the bullet points. Watched where? At cinema. When? A year ago. Some information when you watched the film. Here you write some information about the film. Father has dementia. He can't remember things. But you just write can't remember things. Forgets a lot. Don't include the subject. Then it will be a sentence. So just can't remember things. Forgets a lot lives with daughter. Keep adding your ideas with these bullet points. Remember as much as you can other important information so that you can write about it later. Okay, so continue the bullet points. Difficult life, many problems. Again, couple of phrases, no sentences. Great acting, touching story, meaning that it made you feel emotional. Touching means made you feel emotional, sad or happy. Keep adding the points you want to write about later. Important topic, mental health. Maybe this is something you want to write about in your review. Brilliant film, recommend to others. Here you're giving your opinion about the film and saying whether you would recommend the film to others. Again, all phrases, no sentences, okay? And this is how you should plan. You will now use this plan to help you write your review as we shall see here. Start with a suitable title for your review. So, father, man with dementia struggles to remember. Okay, so here we've used a colon there and we have come up with a title. Then the first paragraph. I saw the movie Father in the cinema a year ago. It is about a man with dementia who lives with his daughter. Two simple short sentences, okay? Make things easy in the beginning. The movie is very touching. It made me think about the challenges of caring for someone with dementia. A very straightforward, easy to understand first paragraph. And now we can start developing our ideas 
in this second paragraph. Remember, our plan is helping us write these sentences and paragraphs. We start the second paragraph with a couple of complex sentences. Although we call them complex sentences, there's actually nothing complex about them at all. They're quite easy to understand. So the second paragraph starts, when the father's dementia gets worse, he struggles to remember his life. The film is hard to watch because it shows the difficulties of caring for someone with dementia. I could not stop thinking about the film for days. So this second paragraph develops your ideas. I've started uh, this paragraph with two complex sentences. Like I said, there is nothing complex or complicated about complex sentences. These ones, I've used the first one with when, the other one with because to give more information. And then we've ended it with an exclamation mark. You need to show that you can use different types of punctuation like an exclamation mark and a colon. You can use the same structure and create different sentences. For example, with when, you can say when the daughter struggles to look after her father, she gets her husband to help her with him. I really liked watching the film because I learned a lot about dementia. So these are forms you, know, you can use to make your own sentences. Now let's write the third paragraph. And remember, keep things simple. Use mostly simple sentences. The acting in the film is great. Anthony Hopkins gives a great performance as the father. Olivia Colman is also good as his daughter. The film is beautifully shot and the direction is excellent. Okay, nice and simple. Using easy words like excellent and great and beautifully. You should be able to uh, spell and write these words quite easily at entry three and level one. Again, you can use the same sentence structure and create your own sentences. You can say the actors in the film were great. Anthony Hopkins gives an excellent performance as the father. Olivia Colman is also wonderful in the film. We're just using the verb to be in these sentences to create simple solid sentences. Let's finish this review off with a final paragraph. Although the film is about a difficult topic, it is also heartwarming and hopeful. I would highly recommend this film. It is a wonderful story about family, dementia and the importance of love. Again, we've started with a complex sentence and there's nothing complex about it. You can use the same form and create your own sentences. Although the film is hard to watch, it is an important story and gives hope to people with dementia and their families. You can use the same structures in your own writing. Uh, for example, I would highly recommend this film. I would highly recommend the food at this restaurant. I would highly recommend this book. Again, it is a wonderful story. It is a great shopping center. It is a beautiful park. It is an amazing library with so many great books. Feel free to use any of these sentence structures when you have to do the writing in task two and task three. Why do I keep going on about writing correct sentences? It's because one of the criteria that a sentence has in order to pass the exam is that you need to have five correct sentences to pass. In my opinion, you should be able to do this quite easily. So let's say you write three or four paragraphs per writing task for writing task two and writing task three. And let's say per paragraph, you write five or six sentences per paragraph. So you're looking at writing up to maybe 20 sentences or just less than that per task. I think you should be able to very easily come up with and write five correct sentences, okay? Uh, even if you make some mistakes in other sentences, you should be able to do that. And this should give you hope. This should make you think, yes, I can do this quite easily, okay? Most of the sentences should be simple. Yeah, you, should, you need to write some compound sentences, some complex sentences. But first of all, become confident in writing short sentences. If you get very confident in your construction of basic, uh, simple sentences, this is good groundwork to then go on and create some correct 
compound and complex sentences as well. First, become really good at creating short, simple sentences. This then will give you the confidence to go on and make some good compound and complex sentences as well for both task two and task three in the Ascentis writing exams. Some final tips for writing tasks two and three and just generally the whole exam. Read the task instructions a few times, okay? A lot of the times you see learners before the exam are nervous, you could be nervous. Uh, so you need some time to calm down and understand. You will not understand the task after only reading the task's instructions at once. Read it a few times. Let it sink in slowly, okay? So just make sure you do that. You know, read it a few times. Try and understand it. Give yourself some time and then this will really help you in the exam. I say this to you because I have seen on many occasions learners making this mistake that they start writing before they've understood the question. This happens so often. It's because when you're nervous, you just want to rush. No, calm down, read it, the question a few times and make sure you understand before you begin the work. Use rough paper in the exam. In the exam, you will be provided with some rough paper. You can take notes and you can then use your best ideas to write in the actual exam paper, okay? You will have enough time if you plan everything properly, okay? Use the rough paper to write down your ideas uh, and then choose the best ones, the correct ones to go into your actual writing exam. This will really help you because again, I've seen this so many times. Students are just rushing to write and you know they don't stop and think, let me instead use these ideas because they don't make take notes. So if you take notes, you have that option of then selecting the best of your work to go into your exam paper. So don't let this opportunity pass you by. Take full advantage of it. Last but not least, you must try to relax and be positive. You will do much better in the exam if you are relaxed. Being nervous is normal. You will have nerves during your exam. You just have to accept them, okay? And try your best to relax and be positive. Just before the exam, do something that helps you to relax. It might be listening to some music, going out and getting a cup of coffee or just chatting to some friends. But make sure you know you smile like these uh, fake actors on this slide. They're smiling <laughs> and projecting happiness. You should do the same. Smile and laugh and do whatever it takes to try and be positive. I know a lot of people will not be happy with me for saying this, but to be honest with you, exams are not that important. In the grand scheme of things, you know, they are not that important. You will take many exams in your life. Some you will pass, some you will fail. You know, that's life. What is more important is that you are healthy, you are well, and you are happy. Also, that you are happy enjoying learning, that you're enjoying the whole process of learning and becoming a better, not just a better learner, but a better human being. And these things are far more important than any exam. So just enjoy this whole thing and just do your best. Whatever happens, happens. At least you know that you did your best and that is all that you can do, okay? All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, give it a like. And if you'd like me to do another video about formal and informal letters and emails, which will most probably come up in your exam, then leave a comment below and tell me that you would like another video and then I'll do another one if it helps you. Have a great day and all the best with your exams. See you later. Bye-bye.